It's funny, like, have you ever been in the position where you're not sure if you pronounce your name right? Like, you just pronounce your name the way you've always been told to pronounce your name. But uh, when I was in college, there was this British lady. This was one of our professors. And she says Tasha. No. Instead of Tasha. And I've realized it's just a British thing. Like, that's how they pronounce Tasha. It's like like, Tasha. Yeah, but it's so weird. Because then you're like, I don't well. Yeah, I don't no. know. I guess. <laughs> I I was at a restaurant and the waiter was Polish, so I like gave him my card and he goes, "Oh, that's the Guzgi or something," and I was like, "Huh?" And <laughs> You're like, like, "I've never heard a Polish person." <laughs> I was like, "Can Same you explain way. more?" I don't know what this is. I want to. I want to intro this episode and get started right away before I fuck this up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to the Sex Actually Podcast. Your boy Dave Neal with Tasha Courtney and Veronica Ketkopsky. Uh, yeah. Is that good? Yeah. I said it with a question mark. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you nailed it. I, uh, can, we, can you just become Veronica K? Can you just... I've thought about it, but I don't know. I like it. So it's Polish? Yeah. Everything, they say what? Because Pol- because toboggan's too long, so everything ends with ski. Isn't that the old joke? You never heard that Polish? Don't look at me I've like... I've never um, heard that joke you before. You should try a comedy. That was, <laughs> I've never you've never heard that joke. <laughs> you're no, Polish, and I you've never it. heard the joke that why do they... Well, why is every last name end with ski? Because they don't know how to spell toboggan. No. No. It's not landing for me right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, I also, it's like from my grandpa. Like, I'm not even like a Polish person. You realize you yeah. still don't have the stream up, right? Oh, fuck. Jesus Christ, Dave. Okay, keep talking, though. <laughs> sure, yeah. Let me handle this. Dave always like makes fun that anytime he walks away from the podcast, it just goes to shit like, because I'm clean. like very comfortable with the like dead air Uh i guess or just like downtime in a conversation i'm just very comfortable with silence (laughs) and so dave is like that's great on podcast dave is the person who's always like motor mouthing and keeping the show running i just pulled an ab muscle i literally just pulled a muscle you're gonna be okay just have a drink of water i'm gonna sign on to this thing uh, and we're gonna get started all right boy so uh, so but pol so you're just polish by identity you're you don't have any polish history not even that so my grandpa was born there and then literally at age like half um, went to Argentina because they're that family side of the family is Jewish, so they were like, We gotta get the fuck out, you know. Um, so he grew up in Argentina, and that's where my dad's from, and that's where like most of my family isn't is. that where the Nazis went? The Nazis did also go there, it's not great, but so that you, you're you have a Jewish family that went to Argentina, mm-hmm. was it after the war? Is that when they it went? It was like during the war, like my grandpa was literally a baby, and then, the, and then Hitler's over there, they think, yeah. I think they, you know, so have I you s- watched that show hunting Hitler? No, it sounds fucking awesome. Dude, Tell me more. it's really cool. It's history channel, but you can watch it on what? Like Hulu, right babe? And yeah. we've watched a couple episodes of okay. it and it's sort of like the conspiracy theory kind of shows where like they, j- uh-huh. it, you know, it's just lots of episodes of them like searching for evidence that Nazis were here and blah, blah, blah. But there is evidence. Like okay. there's evidence that plenty of high level officials right. were there and they built like these secret compounds Ooh. and stuff. Um, but anyway, it's an interesting show if you're into that sort of history oh i am hey we got the live stream okay it never starts like this we're gonna Uh, i'm gonna restart this just because of this thing dave has i'm sure you won't get the name right the second time (laughs) 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 um yeah so this is live streaming we don't have to like pay too much attention to it okay I'm not cool. kidding. I'm literally sweating right now from just just from coming from 115 <laughs> degrees. I, I took a cold shower. You're just really not very put together, and you know that's gonna leave sweat marks on this thing, and I'm not gonna be happy about it. We're never we're never uh, this, <laughs> this entangled. Like what the fuck? It's you. Oh, but you it's wrapped this you. up. I was ready to go, and then you wrapped up the cord. I plugged in the shredder. Can't wait to get we to have limited plugs. I can't wait to get to know, know. you. <laughs> it's an old building, so it came with like three plugs right. for the whole and apartment. Like, like, yeah. Like, that's not uh, gonna make it. So um, just unplug the top no, right take, one, babe. I can take this off. Top right, unplug it. I'm making your life really simple. Just look. No, I'm already good. The top right one is this. It is. Yep. It's not the shredder. No. <laughs> um. <laughs> Do you have a shredder? We, have, we like to keep a shredder here. You know, I wish I did. I. Yeah, that's fine. I do the like paranoid thing. I black everything out and then I rip it. I have wanted a shredder since I was like seven years old. And then finally I was an adult and I got one. And it's one of my prized possessions. <laughs> the the shredder. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I never do a second intro. Maybe we'll we'll just air it from the beginning. But I just for 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 uh, I'm trying to impress you, Veronica. I'm trying to make it look like my we bar were. is so low for everything in life. Like, don't worry. <laughs> I'm trying to make it look like we run a good ship here. Everyone, welcome to the Sex Actually Podcast. Your boy Daniel with Tasha Cordy. This Hello. is Take Two with Veronica Kietkowski. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. I told you no, you weren't going to get. I it. wasn't even close with that one. Kiet Kietkowski. Perfect. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, I just didn't have as much confidence that time when I said it. Anyway, thank you so much for coming on our podcast thank you for today. Having me. Look, you're episode three. 40 cool I think. wow 340 wow, you guys nice have done friend. so many i know so many five Holy years shit. what the fuck we weren't dating when we started this really yeah oh. yeah we started dating in like episode 50 or something we had wow. so <laughs> many people told me not to try to date her so many people were like dude she doesn't like, like you get one over person it. but you've and already talked about so much sex like it makes sense <laughs> yeah no 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 well she was like the chick i was talking about who wasn't even a co-host i was just talking about this girl i liked uh, and then she kind of, and then, and then we're, now we're together. How'd you guys meet? Uh, it's a, the, it, the, we met on like a set. It's boring. Okay. We didn't like each other. Years later, hello, we settled. Great. Once you get in your thirties, you just settle for people. Okay. She settled for yeah, me. Yeah, that's fairly <laughs> accurate. Yes. You're a young, you're a young duck out there. What's, what's going on with your dating am life? Am I? Um, I am dating. I'm not that young. I feel like I'm 26. That's not that young. Fuck you. I you know what? When you're 26 and you just go, I'm old. <laughs> Everyone's like, so fuck you. <laughs> Tw- you're mid twenties. Quarter it's century. Mid-20s, yeah. What's going on with it? Are you uh, like, are you are you pursuing uh, relations, or are you just single stand-up comedian bouncing around? Yeah, I actually just started dating somebody. Um, for th- it's nice. I haven't really like had anything like this ever. I've been like pretty much single my whole life. What kind of what does he do? He works in finance. Ooh, yeah, like, nice. He's just like a, he's like a real person that's not like in the comedy world or in any or of this entertainment. Shit. <laughs> yeah, like, See, yeah. I hate hearing this because Tasha. I she just hates wish I could do over. <laughs> She I w- really want to do over. She she feels like life has passed her by and now no. she's stuck on a podcast with a comic. Yeah. That sounds like a nightmare to a lot of people. Yeah. A lot of people are like, ooh, cringing, listening. But that's but you know the, how it's going to go. Some reality. shit's going to go viral. You're going to uh-huh. build your act. You're going to travel the world in an RV or a jet plane or whatever. And then, the, no offense, but like she, if she was with some other dude, she wouldn't be able to live the lifestyle she gets to live. This uh, yeah. I would already be on private jets. I would already be on Does vacation. your boyfriend have a brother for Tasha? Because apparently that's what he she might. wants. We're not at that point yet, so let's not Have you defined ourselves. the relationship? We've had a couple awkward talks, and I actually have it on my mind. I'm like, next time it's got to be. Because you, you want it to be settled in? I just want to stop using condoms. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the thing? You have to use a condom until you know. Yeah, because like, I mean, I'm still like fucking around, and like I think he's probably still sleeping with other people too, and I'm like, I'm ready to, to nix the B team, but I just want to make sure I'm also not getting like herpes. Yeah, yeah you don't want to yeah. nix the you B wanna... team till. Until you know like, exactly he's the starting exactly um <laughs> <to find> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i don't even know but yeah this is the first guy that it's like i'm like well he's actually interested that's weird um what, at what point do you nix the b team during the conversation or like when you cop enough feels for them i feel like it should be after the conversation like i want all my my ducks in a row before i make those calls and i'm like all right this is done now i know we've but. talked about this in the past where a lot of people the advice i think tasha and i are both on the same page with this where we tell people like not to single out someone as like the one and only future because yeah it's like can you can become obsessive yeah. and you can put too much pressure on it well yeah when you're early on dating i i feel like it's your benefit to still sort of be like casually dating other people totally. like until you have that conversation yeah. define the relationship okay yeah. this we're gonna do just us for a while be monogamous yeah like then then you make the move but i think in the beginning you want to get to know somebody without having that i agree and I, I did notice myself like maybe a week ago i was hooking up with someone else and the whole time i was just kind of like are we done like i was like oh fuck i'm not into this anymore <laughs> that's like scary but what is it that but that's makes how you, you eliminate guys know, from your know, circle right? you yeah. know like sh- slowly but surely one or two or three like stand out from the crowd yeah now what makes a guy stick because you can have good sex with a guy or a girl or whatever your thing is you can have like a good sexual relationship but like still not like them at all like you know what i mean like it's not always like good sex or like what makes what made this relationship stick with finance bro like that you want to take it to the next level i feel like we just like connect i don't know it just feels different and does he come to your shows and do all that shit? That's how we met. You met he he was an audience member. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. You fucked yeah. the audience. I know. Chuckle fucker. Yeah. Chuckle fucker. Oh, I. You know what? This is why. Like, I usually like will be the one who calls someone a chuckle fucker, and then everyone looks at me like I'm the asshole. No. You are a self-proclaimed chuckle fucker. Well, I think. Or he's a chuckle fucker. Other way yeah. around. Depending on if how your set went, but it sounds like your set went well. <laughs> set went well. Before and well, after. Apparently. So yeah. what was his move? What was did did he pick you up? How did that work? It was really cute. Like um. I feel so weird talking about this because I'm like, we haven't DTR'd, but whatever. whatever. <laughs> Who cares? Um, no, I like I have a whole joke. You've probably heard it. I'm like, oh, you only hook up with douchebag. Blah. So I did my set. I had that joke. And then afterwards, I was like, I don't know. Also, during a set, I'm usually like pretty unfuckable. Like, I never look that cute. I'm like just a mess. Um, so I was cleaning up because it's the show that I run. So I was like cleaning shit up and like just kind of like ready to go black out and like go home. And I sensed this like man presence. And I was like, huh? And then he was like, 
He literally goes, do you only hook up with douchebags? Because uh, I'm not one. And I was like, ah! <laughs> Nice line. And then yeah. I was like, wow. And then we just started talking. And then he, I'm going to call him Liam. I like to Liam? give people names. That sure. way you're not using their real names. But that sounds yeah. like a Liam move. Like now, the, the, I always say the difference between a creep and someone who's charming is whether or not you're attracted to him. Like if this I was mean, a guy. Like really hot, so well, if this fine. was a guy you weren't yeah. attracted to, it would have been like so stalkerish to have some guy. I would have just been like, yeah, please leave. Um, and he has to have that confidence to know that he can just come up from behind and yeah. like, be like some lurking presence and then just nail it with yeah, the line. He nailed it. That's a finance bro he line. He really nailed it. I like a good finance bro. I, I lived in New York with all, all my buddies were finance bros and like they were, yeah. They, they, I mean, it's like, uh, you know, business bros. That's like the industry you get into when you don't like have anything special you want to do is you get into business. Right? Well, what I like about him is that he has other passions and he's not just like a uh, bro, finance, you know, he's not just like going to work and then like doing coke all night. Like he does like other things so i like he that. sells coke he doesn't just exactly. do it he sells it he's a businessman exactly. he's got to run a business man. what's like like uh, are you aware of the sort of red flags that do you, you're 26 you're right in the prime of your red flags paint mm-hmm. them white part of your life so i actually last not even last year must have been a year and a half ago it was like in this horrible thing and then i was like i made a promise it was like a cheesy like new year's promise but i was like no more of the red flag painting white. I was like, the minute you see one, run your ass out of this situation. Like, this is insane. And this is the first guy where I'm like, I'm like, where are the, the flags? Like, I don't, so nothing have, has come up yet. You haven't seen any flags yet? Yeah. I, mean, wow. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no flags yet. It's horrifying. I'm just like, fuck, they're like. What are you looking for? Like, uh, what's, what are you, what are you cautious of when you start a new relationship? Um, if they're just like shady, especially about like other girls that might be around and the fact that like, we've just been the, like, yeah, we're fucking other people still, like whatever. I'm like, oh, you're being honest. Like, cool. And like, just, just general shadiness i feel like that's now what has happened that has made it think that the relationship's progressing are there like sunday morning phone calls we've like been on a trip together oh you've been on a trip yeah where'd you go uh we went to ventura well yeah oh i think i i for some reason it was like a little weekend i know i I heard honduras but we went to honduras (laughs) (laughs) i I, I, I literally heard honduras and then like no she said she definitely said ventura (laughs) the next county over yeah we were supposed to go camping and then a campsite got rained out and he was like well you're already coming to meet me in ventura because he's already up there i was like cool so what'd you go? What'd you do? We just stayed in an Airbnb and like just drank. Oh, yeah, wow. It was nice. You had that protected sex. You, yeah, what's up? I know, God. Now, I didn't realize that was the move that you go, that you wait till you're, you know, that's a very like uh, sort of. What, uh, do you, what did you think? I don't know. I thought you just bang. I didn't realize we we're worried about condoms and all that shit. Yes. I didn't know. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, how many people... Responsible people are worrying about condoms, babe. babe. It's not worth it to just have a lifetime of herb. Yeah. Her, I hear you. Know, you. It's, yeah, just, when you're, like, dating around... Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. And I have an IUD in, and apparently that can, be like, make it... You can... It increases your chances of, like, shit going wrong, basically. The way my doctor explained it to me, she's like, those little things are basically like a tightrope for disease. I was like, great. Jesus <laughs> Christ, oh, a tightrope. Thank tight you for that <laughs> visual. She's like, they can just go up into your uterus. Is it like, a tightrope? So I thought it was, like, a... It's like well, a nuvering, like right? there's, things that hang down. And she was like, they can just crawl up in you. What are they doing? What's the, what are they hanging? So you can pull it out oh. when you're ready. Yeah. And you got to go in there. You pull it with your fingers. I think the doctor will. Oh, okay. I, w- I won't. So <laughs> it's basically like uh, what the blimp has when the blimp's got the. <laughs> you got a blimp in your vagina. Yeah. By the way, I and again, again, it's I guess it's an ongoing thing now. I started posting content online, and uh-huh. everyone's calling me cringy online. But no one's ever told me in, in real life that I was a cringy person. But I was t- having this conversation with um, our guest Jess and Tasha a few weeks ago, and we were talking about gynecology and the fucking internet. I mean, it was like four or five people, but they went off on me. Being <laughs> That's like, the what, show me your uh, show me your medical school degrees it's like don't you realize the podcast is about pulling shit out of your ass or <laughs> vagina depending on what you're talking about like w- since when do we need to have like uh, to We've know never what- claim to be experts <laughs> do I, so everyone do i have to put a disclaimer at the top of every episode like don't take us for medical this is advice. Not medical advice. <laughs> Wait, I thought I was here to get my IUD taken out. This uh, well, awkward. the forceps. Is, is forceps I don't, so uh, get that. I have a spatula. We don't even have time. A spatula. This, uh, Again, thumb. it's called a speculum. No, I was literally talking about a spatula. <laughs> I was going to say that we've got like salad bowl. Anyway, anyway. so uh, so yeah, and I, and I, and I made the, the fucking mistake of saying that I thought the vagina was ugly, which I still stand by. It's a weird looking well, instrument. Well, penises aren't, aren't Exactly. As long Those as we aren't. agree that all 
all of downstairs. Everybody's downstairs is a little wacky looking. It's weird. It's just weird. But I'm just saying because it's like I want in, you know, (laughs) whatever. Because the vagina is like inward and there's different levels and layers to it. It can breed. There's there's more dizzy. Like there's a reason women have like. Are you kidding me? Yeast infections. You you can't even have a you know fuck in the hot tub. No guy's gonna have a problem if he fucks in the hot tub. My point is is that men like they gave men like we're the dumber gender because we're not gonna be take care of our dick and balls. So they gave us less diseases that can go with it. I think like we don't have to worry about HPV well, and all that shit. You yes. guys are no, we don't. Like women are the women. Unfortunately, are getting like the cervical cancer. You got to pee after you have sex. No guy's gonna pee. Yeah, after but you it's have sex. y'all being irresponsible, not knowing that you're carriers. That's like mm-hmm. causing cervical cancer in women. So like you could step it up and like go to Planned Parenthood and get tested every six months, and that would be really helpful for all the girls out there that are trying not to be like seventy five percent or whatever the great, stat yeah. is. Is it something you worry about when you meet a guy? Like, do you need to see his sex history? Like now, if you define the relationship, so you pull the goal, you pull the uh, the well, condoms. Well, I think out. in general, like you're supposed to disclose. Like, yeah. if you have something that is not curable and high risk of giving it to somebody else, you need to tell them. Oh yeah, it's super illegal to yeah. not tell someone if you have herpes or something. Of course, but like, did you do you ask when you first when you like you like you know what I mean? Like, so what are you gonna do? Look at his medical charts? Some HIPAA agreement shit? No. You know what I mean? Like it's a it's a weird conversation because we had someone who wants to be on the podcast. I don't know if I'm gonna even let them be on, which probably shouldn't now. <laughs> I'll, I'll just because they're the founders of the Safe app, and apparently it's an app that like uh you know everyone who sees everyone it's like a tinder but when you were swiping through you get to know for sure that they've been tested like this week and and i love the idea behind that i just didn't like what they wanted to come on and like pre-approve all the questions and i was like this ain't a fucking sponsorship bro like i'd rather you know not make a penny than have than have to be like so tell me you Mm -hmm. know what i mean it's like we're here to talk to our friends about their iud's and things like that (laughs) i always mess it up with ied or what's the explosive improvised explosive device (laughs) that it please don't put that in your vagina (laughs) always mess up does those come with strings too like yeah you don't want to anyway so so um in the now in the past i wanted to ask this how many guys is a safe good like fine amount of guys to be hooking up with where you're not overdoing it like do you have a certain number where you're like all right i'd like to have hooking up with or dating hooking up with like like Um, like like uh when you're waiting to see which of these uh saplings takes root how many different my roster is about three right now Get a roster. And it's like, well, it's just, I get tired. I feel like any more than that yeah. is kind of like a, a lot of upkeep. Yeah. So, so what's wrong with the other? So you got, you got main Liam, but what's wrong with these other two? I'm just uninterested. Like, but there's you're no still, future. Do they know that? Uh, <laughs> I think. I don't know. Subscribe neither, to none the of podcast. Them are making if, an effort, you know, to like guide yeah, it into anything more serious. It's either. either like it starts to fizzle out. And I think that's what you come to see when you're like, when you have a small handful, is like either guys are going to be really into you and they're going to be like wanting to like live in the masculine. And that means like stepping it up and planning dates mm-hmm. and following up and calling to say good morning and like doing all the things that make you feel like wow he's Mm -hmm. treating me like a queen like he's really excited about me that's a precursor to what your future relationship is gonna look like Mm -hmm. now are those guys doing that are the other two it's just like a pretty much a sex is it like a you up thing pretty much yeah but it goes both i mean it's both ways like now you want me to move your mic stand no you're gonna keep it there okay so it's they don't so if you want them to find out that you're not into them just send them this episode of the podcast. Apparently, just say, should, "Hey, yeah. fifteen minutes hey, in, just forward we're to done. that part, and then re- yeah. subscribe to the podcast and leave it a review." But I also, a, yeah, I have a feeling in the next like month or so, things will sort of fall into place, and like, I'll probably have to make some changes. But I feel like for now, I'm chilling. Have you had your uh, heart broken before? Um, I've never. I don't know. I guess because I've never really been in like a serious actual relationship. And why is that? Um, there's probably a lot of answer. Well, like, where do we that. start off? And let's start off in college. Like, what what was you went to? What was your college like uh, persona? Were you just um, free and easy? Or? No, I so I kind of like broke my vagina for like seven years. Like it was basically broken. what you didn't yeah. lead with breaking your vagina. That you got that's a story you lead <laughs> I know. with. That's probably why I haven't really dated a lot. Um, yeah. How do you break your vagina for seven years? I like, don't even know. That's just like my funny way of putting it. But I basically just like every time I was having sex, I was just bleeding like constantly. And it was obviously like not fun for both of us, you know, anyone who was involved, it was like not cute. And like, there's only so many times you can be like, my, my period, me, so silly. Like, it was not that. And would you communicate to them like, hey, I've, I've got a, um, you know, I, I bloody vagina. No, because it wasn't like all, the, it was like 90% of the time. So every time I was just like 
filled with anxiety. I was like, I hope this is the time it doesn't happen. And then it would. And I'd be like, fuck. And it was just like horrible. And, and you I know wait, why? What kind of bleeding? Just like almost like a cut, like just like blood. And I was like, what the fuck? This is so stressful. And I cannot tell you how many doctors I went to. But some of them were like at the UCLA Health Center, which, by the way, that place fucking sucks. I had a rash one time on my back and she was like, we think it might be herpes. I was like, it's my back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it is. Like, can you just give me cream because it itches? Um, so they suck. They suck. Um, so I was like going to so many doctors. I was like, I don't know what's going on. And then, of course, it became a mental thing where I was like, I can't even enjoy sex anymore. I'm like closed off. Like it was like I can't even like let anything inside of me because I have this anxiety that now I'm going to be like bleeding all over this person's bed, like whatever. Um, and then finally, it must have been like two years ago I was just like okay I can't so I went to this new doctor in Beverly Hills I love her Dr. Rebecca Brown she saved my life um and I was like this is my history help me like I don't know what's going on and she literally I feel like within two minutes like looked inside of me and she was like oh yeah you have like this thing like there's like these cells that are like supposed to grow on the inside of your cervix that are growing on the outside so they just keep falling off and I was like excuse me bitch it's just a little it's cervical just that, scrape. It's just that. And she was just like, but how do you fix that? So she was like, well, there's a couple things we can do. We can take you off the pill, see if your body adjusts, give it a few months. And then if it's still happening, come back and we'll like do this one little procedure. I was like, what the fuck? This has been like years and years of just like, honest, like it was like tormenting. It was horrible. And all these doctors, no one was able to like, all these diagnose. Doctors be like are you sure you're not using enough lube? I'd be like, that's not the problem. And she pops the hood and it's like, there it She's is. She's literally like, this is your issue. And then the pill kind of helped, but not really. And then they did this procedure where they essentially like cryogenically freeze your cervix and they stick this tube in you and they freeze those cells. It was excruciating. Um, Just like an icicle. They stick an icicle in there. Is that how it works? Have you had that's it? A, no, but I have heard from um, someone else. That's the kind of thing that they do when uh, they're, what is i guess it would be hpv or something they go in and like freeze they, cells they, yeah yeah it was crazy but the idea behind it was that like those cells all die and then it regenerates ideally not incorrectly um so she did that i went off to host a show that night bad idea i was like i'm dying um but then after that i was like totally fine and i was just like fuck man and all it took was one just doctor that. to just listen to you and yeah. a coincidence she's a woman she's literally a goddess well you her. know I'll, I'll say this because uh, when, when we posted this video about our chat about gynecology and who knew i who knew that i'd be the uh, the, for, the expert, forefront yeah. expert on uh, talking about vaginas uh because they are disgusting. And no, they're <laughs> ladies, they're not disgusting. We love them. They're beautiful flowers. Uh, as long flowers. as you follow that with dicks are absolutely disgusting too. I think you're all right. Dicks Let's can just, be disgusting. But you can have a vile. Have you seen they're a They're so gross. I've seen. They're they look like, like alien yeah. things. I, don't, <laughs> I was sitting down my, with my boxers on and like my dick like fell out of the Ugh, wrong put hole. It away. And Tasha looks at it and goes, <laughs> what's that? <laughs> I go, Imagine a world where I was like, man, look at your clam chowder. <laughs> but you want because the vaginas are nice and tucked away and they're just like, <laughs> Sometimes in some vaginas, some labias look like small penises. Really yeah, small go penises. Google it. You can have like a like literally like a dick b b vagina. They're very similar. I've I mean, never seen a dick vagina, but I have seen very long labias. There you like, go. Like four inches, I think Google they it. can be like four inches. Well, what was I getting to? I had a strong point that I was. I don't know. You were talking about oh, being the. So, so someone in the comments said, "Hey, you know," because we would be like, "Oh, male doctors must suck because you know." They um they're not empathetic and this and that and again we're 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 but whenever you talk about genders it's a giant you know yeah. whatever it's like very broad stroke here but uh but then someone said hey to defend male gynecologists a lot of times they're very um, inquisitive because they don't make they don't project their own mm -hmm. vagina they don't have a vagina to be like well you're just blah 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 or you're just mm -hmm. bleeding or did you you got herpes on your back they're just like <laughs> I mean and yeah. I guess it depends on your case and I guess the point is is to like if you're going to get a second opinion about anything, it's your own body and like figuring yeah. out what's wrong because like how treatable and easy it is to like live a happy life. But for seven years you had a broken. But also I just think it's like not cool that you have to go to multiple doctors to find one who's willing to listen to you mm -hmm. a, but also is inquisitive and wants to give, find the answers. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know. I just feel like in my own personal experience for all sorts of ailments, I go to a doctor and they're either dismissive of me. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm just a complainer right. meanwhile i'm like the person who never go you right. know i would i would wait until i'm on my deathbed yeah. to go to the doctor and um you know so they they dismiss you or they they don't listen to like your full history like if you've got something that you think is complicated you're in tune with your body mm -hmm. and you're gonna give them a list of five symptoms that you think is related they're they like don't even want to hear it yeah. right or they just say it's probably this write your prescription and that's it and they send you home yeah. and you don't have any follow-up or if it doesn't work you're you know it's right. just like a lot of i don't know i, I feel like 
it maybe it's part of our medical system that just like yeah they're three hours late they got are, tea time well no but like you shouldn't want to be a doctor unless you are an inquisitive and like empathetic person yeah like that those should be like the foundation of you deciding you want to be a doctor is like a you like have a huge drive to help people and and you I, I don't i don't know but i feel like a lot of people go into medicine because they're just like oh well you make a lot of money and and that's it but they're and not they score like, well and they're just like smart and sometimes yeah you're better off having someone who's just like listening to you mm-hmm. and, and that it's 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 kind of i mean it's a lot of what we talk about on the podcast is like learning how to communicate and mm-hmm. like your doctor is no different they need to know how to communicate to you and vice versa but and like yes they're on a schedule but i don't know it just seems like it's a large percentage of doctors that don't want to listen so she fixes it boom you're healed yeah then what well then i was like i'm fucking i'm gonna fuck everybody like, i'm fucking everybody <laughs> out here you got seven years to make up yeah. ladies I mean, and gentlemen it's, it's right like, in i had a lot of like sex during those times so it always was just like a one night stand and then i'd be like well i just ruined that because like i ruined his you know his betting is destroyed now um do these guys think that they just had such big dicks sometimes and i was like yeah it's because your dick is so big oh my god <laughs> like i was like anything to just get me out of here at this point um and oh, then but it's so traumatizing yeah it wasn't the most fun i'm like jesus christ um and then after college i dated like kind of this one guy for like a little bit of a year but it was like on and off and like we worked together biggest mistake of my life um and then after that i dated this other guy for like six months but like it wasn't exclusive you and, met like, the guy at work yeah and then you so you did the whole shit where you eat type of thing oh yeah was it sexy while you were dating or like it how, was like, until like i got an insta message from his uh what i thought was ex-girlfriend being like hey just fyi we never broke up and then i was like Ugh. Ooh, what she slid into your dms to yeah, tell you that yeah and you're like all right let's find out what this request so she is she found yeah. out that he was cheating yeah because he'd always told me that they'd broken up and like even i think i even said like before our first date i was like are you sure you just got out of a relationship i don't think we should rush and he was like no i'm over it and i was like great and then it's weird you guys talk like that we talked like that yeah it was so hot <laughs> is that true though that they never broke up apparently and then we were like dming back and forth. she actually seemed pretty chill i was like man we could have been friends in another life i love these stories where the, the women become like friends over she seemed it. dope and then we were like comparing stories and being like oh yeah oh, oh yeah now, did he, now i wonder if she broke up with him then she did yeah yeah yeah. oh so she, she was, was like, like it's over i'm just wanting over. to know or she was just kind of like i just want to know like for peace of mind and like you guys you know like what was going on and i was like oh god um, yeah because i feel like when you're making a decision to break up with somebody especially if you've been together for a long time it's nice to like have yeah, that confidence totally. that like okay this wasn't just in my head like yeah. definitely he's- guys i wasn't gonna bring this up now but it it relates to it. We got a. We have a listener email that's about cheating. Can I read it oh, for you yeah. guys? Oh yeah, sure. Now it's gonna be on the little bit on the long side, but it's it was it's really well written, and um, I'm gonna have to push back here so I can move it like this. Um, let me let me pull it up here. I was a little yeah. I was wondering when I was gonna read this, but she just wrote in a few. Actually, I think yesterday. Her name's Lola. She's written in before about some pretty crazy things going on in her life where she was I the last time meeting. she wrote in. Yeah, well, that's a fake name I gave her, just like I gave oh. Liam. I have to give people fake names. I was going to say, I use that Lola like tampon service. I love it. <laughs> oh, yeah? By the way, the Lola's best. amazing. So she wrote in a day ago. Um, she's a huge supporter. She's listened to hundreds of hours of the episode. And anyway, I love her. I, you know, I, I love our fans. I hate to say fans, but our listeners that are so just like, they're smart. They're kick-ass. They're like, she's well written. But like, anyway, I'll just read it for you. So just kick back and listen. Uh, but after your cheating, you know, Instagram cheating, it sounded like it made sense. Hey y'all, it's been a while since I've written. So I thought I'd give you all a little update. First though, y'all are killing it. The podcast and the private Patreon episodes have all been fire. Definitely digging the mimosa shows you upload as well. Life has been a shit storm lately. So it's great to have a break from that. Just to laugh. Also, Tasha, how the heck is your skin always so freaking gorgeous? You're always glowing. Share those secrets. Oh, thank you, Lola. I had a rough skin month <laughs> this month. Our, I'm we're slowly recovering. Thank you. Know, I really appreciate it. Our listeners know my love language is affirmation, so they like to fluff <laughs> us up. <laughs> <laughs> um, she goes, all right, now for the meat and potatoes of the letter. Uh, uh, I got to give him a fake name. Peter. Peter is out. Blocked in my phone and all social media. He got real ugly because he couldn't manipulate me to do what he, we, what he wanted. So I told him to feel free to shove his head up his own ass and hit that <laughs> block button. Mm-hmm. Good job. I'm all about the block. I'm all about it. the block. Rip the bandaid off when you break up. Nope. Delete, delete, delete. I'm the same way. Like, what is the point? Yeah. Uh, I'm not doing that. Now, that's about right. Joe. We aren't together, and that's been hard. Even though I know in my brain that's what's best for me, I still miss him every single day. It's only been three weeks, but gosh, it's hard. Now for the story on how that finally happened. It took me four years, six months, and 20 days to realize that Joe is a fuckboy. He's king fuckboy. I think he might even have written the manual. You see, he had been sick a couple of days and had been staying with him 
with him and taking care of him, but went home on Friday night to sleep in my own bed. He then texted me at 5 a.m. on a Saturday morning and said he was really sick and asked if I would take him to the ER. So I drove the 40 minutes to his house and then to the hospital with him. After a long morning, they said he had the flu, got prescriptions and fluids and, and uh, food and took him home. He asked me to, st- uh, to take a nap with him. Since it had been an unexpectedly early morning, I agreed. However, I only slept around 20 minutes and He's woke up. He's got the flu. Who's taking a nap <laughs> with somebody with the flu? I'd be putting you in the other Lola, room. Lola's great. Take a nap with him. <laughs> I'd be like, uh, you're quarantined yeah, to your side but of guys, the house. Guys, this is when women become fucking women. This is when you guys get all you know conniving or whatever. He, she goes, I didn't want to wake him, so I got up to go to the living room. I walked around to his side of the bed to fix his covers as they were bunched up and halfway off him, and laying there on the floor was his phone, face up, unlocked. The case on his phone has a built-in screen protector, and it often prevents the phone from locking itself after a few minutes of not being used, like the most phones. I told myself to walk away. I told myself not to look at his phone. It was Pandora's box, and I probably didn't want to know what I already, what I didn't already know. So I fixed his covers and stepped back, but it, but he was still snoring, so he was out cold. I stood there and stared at his phone, adrenaline pumping through my veins, making me simultaneously shake like a leaf and feel like I could crush his phone in my hand. You know what happens next? You already know. <laughs> <laughs> she said that all caps. You already know. Yeah, we know. No. I All picked right. up his uh, phone and did the flight of the bumblebee into his living room. I started going through texts and my brain couldn't focus on the words. I was reading them but not comprehending them. So I stood still and held my breath to see if he was still snoring or if my sprinting out of his room woke him up. I decided to go into his guest bathroom and lock the door. I put the phone on the counter because I was shaking so hard I couldn't hold it steady. I took a deep breath and started reading again. I wish I had an ignorance is bliss, right? To be honest, it rather makes me sick to my stomach even recanting to you now. So many women, so many. Some of them I knew from threesome suites had some of them i knew about some of them i suspected some of them were total shocks mm. and they just took his fuckboy ways and didn't uh, bat a fucking eye one of them canceled plans with him because her father died and hand to god she fucking apologized to him that her dad died and she couldn't see him then she asked him if she uh, felt like she needed to get away and have someone just hold her uh if she, if she could come see him and he told her no he'd be busy but would think of her in her difficult time then proceeded to blow her off for several weeks um it goes on and on do you guys want me to keep reading this is there like more this? juicy stuff? Oh, that's a different one. Uh, let me cut to the part. Um, wow, this guy sounds like a piece yeah. of work. I want to. I'll just go to the ending. Um, she goes. She, yeah, she just kind of like gave the details about how much of a fuck boy he was, which is very fascinating. But I don't want to uh, oversaturate with you the fuck uh, fuck boy literature. But she was very good at describing this. I mean, this guy was not. He is not a likable guy. Um, but anyway, it oh, turns no. out his daughter coaches her daughter. Oh. So like they, she had to. See, she like left him. Boom, cold turkey. But oh no. So so um, so here's what happened. Uh, the the girl who was cheating on him was like supposed to be his best. No, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm trying to paraphrase this and I'm, I'm, I'm just going. read it. You're going to no, 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 no. It's, it's, it's too long. <laughs> paraphrasing. It's, than if he she, anyway, it. she waited like a few weeks before she broke up with them. She kind of like, she, she gave knew, us some space. She, well, she just knew that like this guy was horrible, but also just like forced it down and kind of like, you know, cared. And then she said he was nice to him after like he, she took care of him and she kind of forgot about it. And then finally, like she just like, they got in a thing and then she just snapped and she was, she was like, it's over, but she said it's hard and she still misses him. Um, uh, better man by little big town is so perfect for me at this moment. It's on constant repeat in my car. So anyway, that's where I am right now. Lola. And uh, anyway, it's, it's just interesting that like someone can be such a piece of shit and you still love them. He's an older guy. He's out of shape. He's like, he's like not even in her league yet. And the guy, the girls he was cheating on were like not in her league. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, you've got to protect yourself. That's that's what it comes down to. It doesn't matter. It, breakups are always hard. It doesn't matter if the person's a total piece of shit. I mean, mm-hmm. that's why they talk about like women trying to leave their abusers. It's like nearly impossible yeah. because the head fuck that you get, you know, from like letting someone inside of you quite literally and like mm-hmm. being close and sharing a life and building things together. And this guy had a steady job. He was making good money. So it's kind of like you. I feel like you can kind of see like your future with somebody financially and mm-hmm. then you have to deal with the fact that's like or just your future in general you like fantasize that you're like building a life with this person and then you come to find out that that's not true have you had so so this guy was on the same fuckboy status where like what yeah. is, what what sort of issue does somebody have where they need to mrs doubt fire different relationships like who's got the fucking time that was my biggest question i was like when did dude do- uh, what we hung out decently like a decent amount and the days we weren't hanging out i was fucking sleeping <laughs> like i'm like and How yeah and he had a job this? full-time job yeah, and know. then it's like you say you never got your answers for all that for what? Like did you just dump him? Like how did how did you go? Oh, I mean I literally like I didn't want him. I don't know. I didn't 
want to like turn it into a huge thing so i basically was just like don't talk to me and then like he kept wanting to like ask me why and i was like you know what i don't owe you shit like we're done leave me alone forever i'm blocking you on everything and that's it and and you still had to work with him yeah so then so then uh th- what's this strategy after after that just like did you guys just blinders ignored i was like just no. and then he like would chat my friends at work being like can you get her to talk to me and they were like can you fuck off um <laughs> it was really i also kind of had one foot out the door at that job anyway so i was sort of like do you think he but w- how annoying is that and how unprofessional yeah like well, then i also found out after that he was just like fucking basically every other girl at that company like he this guy had problems and like i think for a while it was like it was me whatever but it was all about him it was all like whatever shit is going on in his brain and yeah so so uh do you think he wanted to know why you were like, do you think he wanted to know for his own reasons to find out if his girlfriend knew or yeah, like, and I was like, I don't know you that. Can you imagine you the stress of like trying to like, it's first of all, it's bad. It's bad to cheat. That's bad. But like to have an ongoing double life, my yeah. buddy, my buddy in college, he's, he's one of my best friends. Love this guy found out his dad was like his everything. You know what I mean? Like guys, Did guys have look a secret up, family, secret family in Russia. Shut secret family in russia, in russia? And, his, and his dad made enough money that he could like you know like he travel he traveled for business and that's what happens i feel like Fuck. he i feel like he probably he probably like like it was why dating. is this a fairly common it's story thing, you I, know I, someone yes. with a, a second family i feel like i always hear about these like secret family things i used to always okay you know like the craigslist killer how he was like engaged and you hear about all these like serial killers that like have girlfriends and i used to always be like how the fuck did they not notice like i would totally notice and then i dated this guy and i was like i had no fucking idea i like I really now like I totally can see how you do get into a secret family thing because it's you not but if, uh, but like a second family like uh, it's one thing if you're in a relationship it's yeah. sort of new whatever it's not that serious you don't live together you have separate apartments or yeah. whatever like I can sort of see how people find stuff to do in their off time yeah. but like when you are a family and you have kids and you have a home like how that. does that happen I knew someone too that had a second family in like South Carolina and something. at what point I mean in a and you have to look at it like my buddy he was like his world was shattered we i oh mean we God, know like yeah. even like our friends that just moved to san diego her dad was like had a second family uh, or like had like a long-term lover that uh, was like they were juggling it's like what the fuck and our guest last episode not a second family but our guest last episode is the side bitch to a guy like the guy's in a relationship but lives with his girlfriend and she's the side bitch and she's waiting for them to break up and yeah. it's like what the fuck it's so fucked but i mean also like what's going on with the other family in russia are they just like oh cool i got this american dad like yeah he comes for one month every year like well, you know how the does government that must be on top of that because that just know. sounds like some so some russian up. shit going on what do you mean the government you know the government if you have a family in russia i'm sure the government is tracking your shit if you're just bouncing between a family in russia spending money on them t-ball like I don't know if they do t ball. Okay. <laughs> oh, you mean like just sending I'm saying monthly like it looks money? Sketchy. It just it probably looks sketchy. On the government knows like where you're spending your money. His wife, I mean, and they're still together now. No, yeah, and and, not. and and she's amazing. No, and not. and and that and that's the thing that's complicated. Where like they had their life set together in yeah. the states, and then he just fucked it up. But like, what is she to do now? Of course, because we, we know. Like, I've got my own my own. Uh, I have a sister who. I thought who, you were gonna say secret family. I was like, yeah, well, <laughs> and, uh, surprise. Anything I can do to get a subscriber here? I just created new families. Write and review. Join the Patreon there, oh Monica. Uh so yeah, it's um. Yeah, like I've got, I've got, a, I've got some family that's that they've been cheated on and and they've got divorced and got remarried. Like yeah. to get together, they got remarried together. They they like said they're gonna figure it out. And so yeah. it's complicated. And I think you should expect if you're gonna do something adulterous, you should expect that it's gonna end your relationship. But, but also, I think it's brave when it doesn't. If you're able to like overcome that, I think that's brave too. But if you're so unhappy in your relationship that you're seeking another relationship why not just break up like why not put the, put the your, period at the end of this sentence yeah. before you start the next paragraph that just makes more sense to me than like hurting a lot of people in the process because <laughs> i feel like to them it's like almost getting off on this mind game of like i'm tricking everybody you know because like they're not thinking rationally like don't get me wrong yeah. i'm sure it's a crazy come to be like banging something you're not yeah. supposed to bang but that's like the genetics of spreading your seed that's like there's something inside of men that's like that it's it, forbidden that genghis khan right or like who you know what i mean there's isn't there like a percentage of the world's population that's all 
Is it Genghis Khan or is it a different? Why? Because of rapid rape. Yeah, and he literally had hundreds of thousands of people, like, and it was all from his like DNA. Anyway, I'm probably again, I'm not an expert, but yeah, it's, <laughs> we need a fact checker. No, but it's like, and again, I don't think you, people, I don't think these guys set out to have a second relationship. Yeah. But it's like, what are you gonna? So is it like, is it no? Is it almost? It just seems like that is like such a red flag. Like if you're having these thoughts, obviously there are problems in your relationship. So make the decision: Am I gonna fix the problems in this relationship or? Mm-hmm. Or am I giving up on this and moving on? And the, that, but obviously it's too simple. For and like, also I, like, I and you call them so psychopaths. And again, I'm not here yeah. to defend anybody, but like I can see, I can like rewind so, like in a situation where you say, all right, you find out you got a second family in Russia. Let's backtrack it. What did you do? Knock someone up and then you got to go visit them. So you keep sending them money and they mm-hmm. forgot. Like there's probably a route where it's not normal, but this shit obviously happens. And like not everyone who cheats are, they're not all monsters. People are fucked up. And, and, and again, it's not. I'm not trying to defend people. I'm just saying it's it, it's it's but very complicated. Absolutely, how, like, how people can like develop these web of lies, yeah. and you go, holy shit! But yeah, don't you get to a point where you're like digging and digging, yeah. and you're like, oh, this is the point of no return. Like I can either come clean now, or I can continue to dig myself deeper. And what's the best? You know, obviously there are consequences for mistakes. And sometimes you know maybe you get a girl pregnant in Russia, and you have to go home and tell your wife, and like maybe she forgives you, and maybe she doesn't. But like living a double life for eternity is that that really how that and i and again she found out like you know i think she found like a receipt somewhere Mm, and like you look at the receipt and you go what the fuck is that and then you start asking questions and when you start asking questions that's just like our our listener who wrote in once you start asking questions and again i don't think it's great to be going through somebody's phone but like you're gonna get you're gonna find what you're looking for well but also i don't think that you go through somebody's phone unless you have like a nagging suspicion in the back of your mind and i really believe that our intuition is strong like there are so many times like have you ever just you're staring at someone and they feel that they're being stared at and they look at you that's real stuff Mm -hmm. so like obviously she knew that something was going on so she looked at his phone to confirm it and like that's that but you've looked at my phone have you thought i was cheating on you before no so you just were nosy no i looked at your phone because i thought you were lying about something and you were (laughs) <laughs> but it wasn't like a it, 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 correct well for, for the my for the, intuition <laughs> says but you're for, shady but for the record state it wasn't about a female no it that it was, was just never something in the it was like babe <laughs> come on i know you're not cheating on me <laughs> i'm okay. just saying i'm just saying <laughs> unless it's with this russian <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's <laughs> <laughs> fucking russian I, i'm not a fan of the russian they're just they're not happy people the Russians How are not, many Russians do you know? I know enough to know that it's just a very like stoic, quiet, no, Chernobyl just because they don't face. smile for yeah, fun, I like cool pe- pictures. I like people who smile. It's it's kind of weird. We're the only country in the world that like smiles for fun. Like other places oh, really? don't do that. Like we smile. We always smile, right? Yeah. We look at someone and we smile. Or like on picture day, we smile in school pictures. Other cultures do not do that. The French do not smile in their school Listen, pictures. All I know is smiling. When Russians you s- don't look at a stranger and smile on the street they would think that that person was a looney tune but what we need in this world is more human connections like we have this social media right it's just like anti-social media right everything's about like kind of like the the, this world we want to project on others and it's like it's crazy to think that if you're having like a gloomy day you just go up to a stranger and smile and say like hi how are you or something and i know it sounds creepy saying that but like that's what we need and we live in these cities where like we don't need like we'll we'll be hiking and someone will walk by us and not say hi and it's like we're the only people on the trail yeah say fucking hi like any other place be like yeah Yeah. how do you not notice sort of acknowledgement smile show your gums and be like hey how are you and it's but it's a cultural thing it's a cultural thing so maybe that's our culture but maybe it's not their culture anyway back to you so (laughs) uh in your russian families yeah so do you i mean what what level of because you talk about sex and in dating and stuff Mm -hmm. in your stand-up uh what level of amount of creeps like comic wise are trying to hit on you after they hear you tell a joke about fucking because it's almost like when a when a woman tells a joke about fucking a lot of guys think that that means they have that they have the chance you know what i mean um really not that many <laughs> you're like i wish it was more it's honestly like i'm like oh is it me like am i ugly? <laughs> no i um i mean it's a good thing i think like i also do feel like i kind of make a choice when i'm doing stand-up to be just like not at least like sexual looking like i don't usually like dress up that nice like i feel like i sort of try to be like Ugh, like i'm a dude Ugh, whatever like i'm just kind of like and what's gross. the strategy of that i just you know i don't want people to just like 
be laughing unwanted attention yeah i just want them to laugh at my material not like oh she's a cute girl let me laugh at her um but if i gave you if i gave anyone advice to not dress pretty i would be literally that would be the end of yeah my but that's life a personal online. choice i think some girls go the other way with it and they lean into it but for me i'm not like i don't know just like haven't done that but i've yeah not really that many guys actually that have been creepy after shows and i'm just like i'm thankful you're like, but I need to, yeah, I mean, yeah. that's good. I mean, you don't want to be followed to your car, but no. also like, yeah, you have to like know what your kind of brand is. And yeah. Like, yeah. Well, you do the same thing too, right? I mean, well, not to the same extent. I will never, like, obviously you do not understand what it's like to be a girl yeah. and have to like deflect like actual, like real crazy or like real danger. Yeah, but I got that one By stalker. The way you dress. I have that one stalker. It's insane. If you, if you took the phone and just went like that, for like 10 minutes, you could go through everything she sent me since I've responded. Yeah. And I know who she is. We used to go to school together. And it's not even someone I used to hook up with. It's just someone who's like, whatever Is that like scary? Like, do you need like a restraining uh, order? Or is it just more no, like No, I don't think annoying. it's scary at all. I think she thinks, like, I think she's very conservative with some of her viewpoints about what, like, you shouldn't have sex, like, until you're married. And she thinks our podcast is like sex. So she she thinks that uh, women are all um, uh, are harlots. Is that what the term she's harlotry? <laughs> yeah. She uses all these like old school terms like har- harlotry for when people are like having sex before. And of course, I'll be like, a harlot, it's fine. yeah, it's like harlots sound kind of cool. It's like harlots, harlots is fun. actually a really good show <laughs> on great. Hulu. Yeah. If anyone wants to watch it, I think there are two seasons really good. But I'm like, I don't think you listen to the podcast because we talk more about like just like communication than yeah. sex. I mean, sex is good and all, but sex you know is- what my mom said on the phone today this morning? She was like, looks like things are going well with your like painting and your sex thing. That's what she said You're to me. Your sex, your sex thing. That's cute. It's I so didn't. Funny. I don't even bother to correct her at this yeah. point because it's like no matter what I say, she's not going to get it. Well, we used to be called You Up. That was the name of the oh, podcast. Cool. We had a. Uh, it's funny because we actually had Nikki Glazer on once, and now she has a show called You Up. I'm not saying she stole. I was going to say. I feel us. like I've heard of that before. I'm not saying yeah. she stole the name of us, but our Libsyn but domain, name, like where we host, that. is called You Up the Podcast. <laughs> like you can still go to it. It's us. We've changed the title because you I should had, sell the domain name to her. Nikki yeah. Come back on it. Nah, fuck <laughs> <laughs> or come back on the. I just spit. Come back on the <laughs> podcast, Nikki. Uh, but anyway, um, and so then we. I was like, all right, I need to become something that's kind of like a little catchy. So we were called Sex Actually, but you know, it's like Love Actually but sex but we really don't talk about sex so the sap is obviously like sex actually podcast sap became more of like the sort of um metaphor of what like the tree is you know like rooted like our icon is like a tree but it's two people it's two humans like connected as a trunk like Mm -hmm. that's a tree and it's really like like sap and then sap is also the the blood of the tree. Yeah. So it's got this whole thing where it's like not to sound super like gay Sappy. about it. Sap, <laughs> hey, got you there. <laughs> yeah. Gay shit. yeah, but that's what we call it, you know, or sappy. Yeah. What, what do we call our listeners? I don't even know. Sap, 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 saplings, saplings, sap yeah. fam. But it, but that's kind of what it became. So it's like yeah, right, you know, that's it's it's about being rooted in who you are and and growing, but not like not not being so needy that you need to take all the sunlight for you because you're just gonna overshadow the thing that should be growing next to you. And that's a relationship. You should Mm -hmm. be growing next to each other. You shouldn't be growing on top or like you shouldn't be needy and be a vine and suck all this shit out of the other person. You should be growing next to each other, which I hope that you and the finance bro, Liam can do. Um, We'll have to have him call in one day when oh you're, when you guys are official, <laughs> whatever. Um, what do we want to get to next? So so you got so you 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 fixed your vagina, mm-hmm. and then you went on a sex rampage. Yes, <laughs> uh, respectively, speaking, <laughs> which is good. I mean, you're yeah. young. You really are young. You're 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 26. So you're at the age where I'm not saying you, you, that your generation hasn't had to deal with like slut shaming and this and that, but you're part of like this like liberation. Like we're going to look back as this is a totally, time to free yeah. the nipple. The I the, was calling. I was like, 2019 is the year of the peen. Like we are in. It, it, this is the time and it's, <laughs> yeah now but how do, so so when you talk about sex and things like that on stage because uh-huh. i've had handwritten letters from my mom telling me that like she thinks what i'm doing is like disgusting uh-huh. and this and that <laughs> and she means well but she's just like she doesn't you know she's she's old school but uh she so she doesn't even know what a podcast she has no idea what the radio, yeah, radio show yeah. Yeah. yeah so like what do your parents think of like you talking about sex on stage or my parents are very like open with that kind of thing they're both really funny so they don't they're just like Okay. And they've been married. They're still yeah, married. They've been married twenty, I guess, eight years. I'm twenty six. Wow. Yeah. Are you yeah. the oldest sibling? Yeah, I am. Yeah, I have a younger brother. And you have one younger brother. Mm-hmm. So you were the first trial run. Now Tosh is the yes. oldest. So this is interesting because I don't know if your personality types are similar. But so we asked uh, beforehand. But you've, you 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 you're familiar with your love languages. Yes. What what would you say is like the 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 biggest thing you crave? Um, I haven't taken the test in a while, but if I remember correctly, I think it was quality time, which makes sense. Yeah, I like that. And then I remember I wasn't big on gift giving 
which I was like, okay, cool. Like I like that now and then, but sometimes I'm just like, okay, what? So it's quality time. Does Liam get you gifts? Does, how does he fit into what you need? Is he good at what you need with quality time yeah, when you yeah. went to Honduras together? Yeah, when we went to Honduras <laughs> for one night. <laughs> oh, yeah. One night in Honduras. One night in Honduras. <laughs> but that yeah. sounds like a sexy yeah, movie. Yeah, that sounds like a, a If you saw Netflix, one night novel. in Honduras, it's like skip past the ads. We're going into it. <laughs> one night in Honduras. Yeah. So um, so he's good at knowing and have you had to have that communi- communication or is it just a natural fit? It's just natural. Yeah, like he'll call me. I'm like, this is, so, I've never been like, who does that anymore? So he knows when to call, when to give you that time. What about date nights? What about like knowing when, like, like I, what sort of quality time do you need? Is a phone call at the end of the night enough? I like that. But like date nights, like we'll start them like right after the workday ends. And then it's like, we're not on our phones. Like we're just very much like with each other. And like, oh, you, you do device free time. I mean, not that it's been like stated. I think it's just been like kind of a, like well, I noticed, when you're like, having so much fun together, yeah, like, you don't want to look at your phone. I ate yeah. uh, an, ex- this is actually Sunday night. I ate an extra edible last Sunday because nice. I had basically and I was like, I'm going to eat an edible. Yeah. And I apparently was high in bed, edible high on my phone. And Tasha got so mad at me for being on my phone. I was so high. I don't, and I tried to put my phone down and I just dropped it oh, off no. the bed. <laughs> and, I, and I literally lights out, woke up eight hours later, like totally fine. But it's like, do you guys, do you know, are you at the stage of relationship where you can be um, abrupt and say like, stop doing that no. i don't think yet no they're brand new, new. they're like, still yeah. like cozy and tiptoey and like nothing's wrong with each exactly. other yet because yeah, yeah, tasha yeah. started that shit right when we started dating she was like, like what uh, uh, uh. kind of just like not accepting the things that i probably got by with as friends because we were friends mm-hmm. first so like she was like there was uh if if if, a, if an alarm can go off on your inside and that's kind of what it is is an alarm when you know we've we, you, when you can look into the fight or flight response when you feel like somebody's your limbic system fucking with your and we read an article and it was about flaring the limbic system uh-huh. when your limbics are flared and when Ta- Tasha's got one of those like very like her gauge for flaring the limbics is a very specific uh, you zone and if you don't hit it which is probably daily I think I would say daily and we talk about highly sensitive people a lot and I think Tasha whether it's sunlight sound touch uh, uh, any I mean there's a yes I'm a highly sensitive person <laughs> are you a Pisces no I'm oh. a Taurus this this highly sensitive thing is a new development of the past couple of years, but I find myself like very easily irritated. Yeah. And sometimes you just need like whatever the stimulus is to right. go away. I feel that. And like, but so when Los Dave Angeles. is the stimulus, <laughs> when Dave is the stimulus and I can control yeah. stimulus Dave, I do. Yeah. Because there's plenty of other things that I but can't control. That's my control. alter ego, stimulus <laughs> Dave. <laughs> that's what I try to have sex with. I'm like, you ready for stimulus Dave? Stimulus Dave and the break that Olympics. vagina. <laughs> you flare your Olympics all right. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like, it's still, I, I still think, and again, we talk about it, we joke about it, but I still think that I take the brunt of traffic's bothering you. And then if I don't answer the phone, your like limbics are flared from something else. And it's like, what can I be mad at? Well, you can be mad at the dog. You can kick the dog all you want, but he's not going to know. But you can be mad at me. This is where, this no is where, no one kick your dog. This is where please. the therapy Dave comes in. Where we, to make we, jokes. Do you guys go to therapy? No, this is it. This you're, is oh, it. You're yeah, you. <laughs> so yes, we do. do poor people <laughs> therapy. <laughs> no, and we've talked about it a lot. And we want to, and we're, we're definitely, we've definitely done probably as much work as we can without that. But I will say, we've learned a lot by like some real ugly, ugly fights. Not crazy, you know, wake up all the neighbors types of fights, but mm-hmm. just the type where, like, as a codependent guy. I, I truly mean this. I never want a moment to be like fighting, but I also mm-hmm. am I like a man, and sometimes. Uh, you know, stimulus Dave over here. <laughs> Sometimes I just can't let shit fly. Well, like literally two seconds ago, you were starting to give me shit for being a person who like spelled it out for you and told you exactly what I needed. But the fact of the matter is that like the biggest improvements that we've had in our relationship have come because we had those very honest, very hard talks. And like, that, I don't know. That's what you need sometimes. So for some mm-hmm. people in some relationships, it flows perfectly. Like you and Liam, you just are naturally on the same page with your love languages or whatever. And mm-hmm. so it's an easy ride for you. But our love languages are disconnected. He's more of like, he likes affirmations. Mm-hmm. I like quality time. 
Um, Which I think is very fair for a lot like, of men that they just want like their belly rubbed and like a, you know, they, like, I, like I want to impress you. But the point being is that like I've had to learn how to think of affirmations as something even worthy of attention because I don't value them on the receiving end. Right. I don't know how to give them. It's right. not my like go to to give affirmations. Right. My go to would be to give the things that I know I love like quality time or whatever else. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't but, bother me. But how could you have ended after my baseball game today? It doesn't bother me. You know I did well. I got the win. But like... I d- but uh, I just... It doesn't occur to me, babe, to tell you but good that's game. Like, that's I thought, like, you know you had a good game. Yeah. We that's were all the point. there. We that's saw the it point. was a good game. And this is, right, this is what would happen after stand-up. Like, you have a good set whenever you walk off stage and she's quiet. And you go, listen, you fucking autistic fuck <laughs> with your dead eyes looking at me. Say good game. Say good set. Oh, my babe's out there sweating and sexy. My, like, you know, I was painting okay, the other day. Hey, and, babe, I, let me tell you something. Good game today. Thank you, honey. That was a really good game. I don't need it. I don't. Uh, yeah, right. No, no, no. I need it, but I. Th- but then I deflect. If, if like, if you, if somebody, and it doesn't happen often, but if you came up to me and was like, Dave, you're fucking killing it on stage. You're looking, you're, 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 you're killing it. I'd be like, ah, shut up, whatever. Yeah. But, uh, but on the inside, I'm going like, woo. Have you tried just saying thank you? To myself. Oh yeah. No, I'm, I'm good. Here's, here's what I, I'm good at accepting a compliment and not necessarily give me one back if you said hey dave you have nice eyes oh thank you so much i wouldn't necessarily be like you have nice eyes too because yeah. that that's not genuine i'll give you a genuine compliment but i'll yeah. like absorb it thank you so much like, i appreciate yeah. that like i'm good at taking the compliment that way but then also i'm kind of like all right i can off like i you're, like it's so easy like uh, filling up my love well with an affirmation is like when the plane dumps the water on the fire the boom done fill it's okay. over i don't need multiple affirmations so it's so easy whereas like if you need quality time, you need hours of this and that. Yeah. That's, that's to me foreign to be like quality time. Quality time is like me bringing you in the car along with my errands. That's what I would like. That's how wrong I am. Whereas like, I think that you just wanting to hang out with me is quality time. We'll go get some other shit mm-hmm. done. So I've had to learn that like, no quality times like Saturday, we're going to go to a country music festival together. That's going to be some quality time, mm-hmm. right? That'll fill up your love. Well, it'll be a good time. But like for me, I don't need, I like that, but I don't need that. Mm-hmm. That's where we differ. What does your boyfriend need? What do you think he needs? Not my boyfriend. <laughs> the future um, undefined we'll relationship. See. Yeah. Like um, what? Like can you specifically say what like really makes him feel loved? I don't know yet. I think it might be a mixture of quality time and also some affirmations. Yeah. yeah. And affirmations isn't big for you as a comedian. Um, I think because I get it elsewhere, I don't necessarily like it's nice. Um, and where else? Where do you get it? You mean from the stage? Just from? Yeah. From, like yeah. to me, that's like gratifying. Um. I guess. I, I, same same here. I mean, it's definitely yeah. gratifying to know you do well in stand up comedy, live theater. There's certain art forms where you get you get that yeah. feeling right away versus like writing a screenplay. You know, ah, I feel good, but like, uh, yeah, do I, I think like it? to me, like, because I'm so busy, if I'm giving somebody a few hours, like, that's like the most I could give someone right now is like my time. So if that's being given to me, that means a lot because I'm like, oh wow, this person's busy too, and like, you only have 24 hours in a day, and the fact that you're giving me some of those hours, that's yeah, like you realize amazing. that time is so valuable, so valuable yeah. in a place like Los Angeles where everyone's hustling exactly. 24 hours a day yeah. just trying to stay afloat totally plus it's probably good too since you don't live together that you know when you're hanging out that it's quality time for the most part right we got to share a shitter yeah that's not quality sharing the shitter is not quality time yeah you know but there's there is quality time involved with living together but it can also be like who's going to pass out on the couch first and that's not quality time like Mm -hmm. falling like you know and i'm not saying it in a sad way like a lot of relationships like two people that just sit down in there you know like we'll 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 be old when we have separate recliners i feel like that's when you know you're old and you get that (laughs) separate fucking like not leather but it's like it's like a floral it's like a floral (laughs) design really old school and you just and then you get home from work you sit down, you kick back, and you don't even touch each other. That to me is like so, and you love it. I'm like, beautiful. I mean, but that's how we are sometimes. We're yeah. like, I'll come home and she'll be sleeping, and it's like we're kind of together. But yeah, you got to remember. But also, I, you know, there you have to be reasonable with how much quality time you need. Like, how how often do you expect that date night to happen? I mean, lately we've only been able to hang out like once a week, but it's been like one really long night. And like, I would like a little bit more, but. It's like okay, next so week, you're next week on, I have shows every fucking night. Like we're not gonna hang out. So you, you know? would say your love language, your your love well is not overflowing, but it's not. You're not in like a desperate like eh, touch me. No, you know? not at all. Like I feel very. This is the first time I've dated someone when I don't feel just like that constant anxiety of like, oh my god, what's happening? Like, where is this going? I just feel very like 
Like I haven't heard from him in like three hours today. And like, I feel like with past guys, I've been like, what the fuck is it going on? Like, what is he doing now? I'm, I'm like, genuinely he's, happy he's for you. Living. Thank it's you. very, it's a, it, isn't it the worst, isn't it the worst feeling to just wonder what someone else is doing? Totally. I mean, I'm so to... horrified that it will end and I'll have to end my life if it doesn't go anywhere. Um, <laughs> it'll be really tragic, but yeah, it's, it's really nice to not feel like. Psycho. And what, and what, what are you, cause this, uh, honestly, before this relationship, it, or even sometimes not so much anymore like i think uh, the longer the relationship the more benefit of the doubt you give somebody that like if they don't get back to you right away like last week a couple of weeks ago tasha wasn't accepting my phone calls and like i knew i'd go be able to like bring home flowers and try mm-hmm. to show her love like i knew i knew i could sh- try my best to show her love but she wasn't answering the phone so you know i just but but like if that happened in an uh, uh, old relationship i'd be like well guess that person's dead like if yeah. you're not answering the phone like let alone like texting back at a reason like we don't communicate text message like i don't get the dopamine rush they used to get when you'd get that text message yeah like, but yeah. that dopamine rush comes with the opposite feeling of like where the fuck are you you like you know what i mean where you just get so angry anxious all these things in early on in relationships i don't know if you know some people are just like scarred in different ways but i feel like yeah uh, that silent treatment or not not hearing back from somebody and it's like, I'm not going to be like overburdening somebody with like a million texts, but like, you know, when that text hasn't been responded to, Yeah. you don't need 15 texts. You know, I sent that to you. You haven't responded. Right. I don't know. And that does, has that, has that ever bothered you? Yeah, sure. I mean, just the other night you were mad at me because I was mad at you because you came <laughs> home so an hour later than you said you were going to be home. And I was starting to have that panic. Like, yeah. oh my God, I haven't heard from him. It's an hour later than he said he was going to be home. And I text you and, you know, you walk through the door two minutes later. But, you know, you let it get to that point of like, you told me you were going to be home at a specific time. You didn't send me any follow up that was like, hey, later than expected mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah. So all of a sudden, my mind goes to worst case scenario that you're dead on the side of the road somewhere. Right because Los Angeles is a horribly dangerous place to drive that's around. That's like a mom thing. And I haven't think. heard of, from you. No, so I think that's something you think when you like love somebody. It's like, oh, they're dead. Like that's See, I would think that, and, and not in our relationship, but I would think if someone's not responding to me, I don't think they're dead. That's the best case scenario. Is yeah, but that dead. wasn't a non-responsive thing. That was just, uh, you said you were going to be home at 10 and mm-hmm. it's 11 o'clock and I haven't heard a peep. Like you're, no, this you're was a, a this yeah. was a 9 p.m. I got home at 9.45 and I was on a show where what like... What are you talking about? That's completely wrong. That's what it was. No, the, obviously you came home late two times. I then. got the text <laughs> thread, babe. I'll go, I'll, I'll, I'll be a, I'll, I'll uh, be a defense lawyer here and show you. No, but like, in, in, in my, I guess like I, I gave you the best case scenario time because I know you really don't care. That's what, and it's like, I'm coming home. It was a shit, you know, one of those shitty shows you do. The audience sucked. It was all comics in the audience. Mm-hmm. And I called them. I was like, the reason none of you getting laid isn't because dating in LA is hard. It's because y'all suck. No one wants to be with you. It's a lot of attraction. You're shitty. I just went yeah. off and they were all comics. Yeah. They were like first year. And I'm just like, mm-hmm. fuck fuck all of you and yeah. then like landon who my, my buddy landon he's the host and he was like okay dave neil everybody <laughs> and then people were like fuck that guy i'm like no fuck you it was yeah. like but it was also like you know sometimes if, if you're dealing with like an apathetic crowd of your peers if they're not listening you just gotta i was just throwing to- i was just throwing fucking bombs at them yeah. but then so then i come home thinking like i got some taco or no like i had food come in or whatever and i was all excited and i'd come home and tasha's not happy and i go wow fuck because this was my solution to my shitty night was mm-hmm. coming home to a happy girlfriend so like all i ever want is to come home to happiness but also i i hear you and like we you know we worked it out but i was like no no, no like time is so precious that i don't i want to avoid that and i and i'm at fault for like giving you the best case scenario but it's like i wasn't gallivanting or like hanging out after the show i'm pretty good at like doing my thing i'll network when it's or like catch up with people on a need be basis but i'm not like hanging out because i got nowhere else to be you know but the point is like don't over promise and under deliver like you're setting yourself up for failure if you knew you weren't going to be home at that time why did you tell me you were going to be home at that time just give me a realistic estimate yeah and if and you knew what time you said to me so if you're sitting at the place and it's not the time that you told me it was going to be just tell me well, you know the other funny thing is when you bomb that bad you can't leave right away yeah. <laughs> because they're going to talk <laughs> shit about you so i like bombed so bad and then was like waiting for like anyone would try to talk shit from stage because like, yeah. Yeah, I just had to go at it. it was, how, how stupid is this? Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't normally have like this hostile vibe, but like sometimes, and it's, it's not like stand ups not going well, but it's like, sometimes you hit this string of such shitty audiences that like, we're not, you know, we're not painters who can just 
do the painting and then bring it to the art show. Like the art show is the audience. And if they're not there, I don't have a fucking painting to sell. Is that a stupid analogy? Does that make sense? So it's like, I'm, I'm like, if, if some, if three nights in a row, I'm taking away my valuable time to go do stand up and like, there's no one in the audience. Sometimes it's pissing me the fuck off. Cause all I want to do is test this joke by some humans that aren't comedians mm-hmm. and dead inside. And you know, and again, and then you'll get a run of like five or six good shows where you're like, I'm the best of the thing in the world. Yeah. And like you get a little bit of both. You're actually, we got to get going cause you're heading to one of those shows right now. Right? Is it already eight 30? No, no, it's not eight 30. It's, it's actually just, um, it's 10 minutes to eight. So okay, we have, a, yeah. we have a no few rush, minutes, yeah. but you if I'm no late, rush. I, I would be happy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go. How do, how do you, how's your, how's your, like, let's pivot to your stand up. How's it going in LA? What's, I'm in such a rut right now. Yeah. How so? I don't know. I just like, I feel like the last two months I've just been like, just swept up in like dating this guy. And like, I just haven't felt motivated, honestly. I haven't felt funny because I'm like, you know, not depressed. It's like so crazy how hard it is to write jokes and you're um, not miserable every day. <laughs> See, I can't, um, write, I can't write jokes when I'm in a bad mood. Oh, I have to be. But it's, and then also it's like, <laughs> it's just been exhausting. And I'm like, hold on. And I, I think before that I had a run of a few really shitty shows. And then I was like, oh, this is just really like turning me off. And like, I was just like, I'm going to take a couple months to like, just chill and like explore a different aspect of life and like fuck it i'm no regrets but i haven't been up i honestly haven't gotten up in like five days i'm probably gonna eat shit tonight because i forgot all my material good um, <laughs> go eat shit yeah, over there exactly but then the it's valley. like next week it's it, things are picking back up and yeah um, i think it's i'm kind of coming out of my my little rut but i'm working on i just started taking this like pilot writing class so i'm trying to explore like the writing side a little bit more and um just gonna see nice yeah well you got to do our mimosa stand-up show yes i'm sorry i was at my brother's graduation that i know i know you couldn't make that one so the next one is june 23rd is that a date you can do or otherwise we'll do july can you do june 23rd i think i'm here all right so everyone who's listening you want to see ronica you got to come to june 23rd some of our listeners that live in the la area some even have driven in from over an hour and a half away oh shit it looks like such a fun show it's so sad it's a fun show it's a it's a it's a and and again if people can't make it they go to the patreon we've launched our patreon Uh you can catch up on on old episodes there and um yeah it's it's interesting it's interesting what we're trying to do now because one this listener who wrote in this horrible review of me uh-huh. the thing she was mad about was that and i get oh, oh i just oh, spill my beer i um oh i can't candy. give i don't have my phone on me do you want some tissues no it's fine it's we're, yes we're, we're, please we're, it's we're re- <laughs> what's a tissue gonna do babe i i mean i literally when you sat down i was like that's gonna what, yeah, what i can't have missed. the beer on this stupid stream over here nobody wants your beer to be on the stream I'm just saying they can't see it why you're not allowed to drink on it or something really but the point is <laughs> is that you've got a perfectly reasonable place to put your drinks and you put all this stuff like this bucket of ice that's leaving watermarks on here oh, it's a drip. <laughs> and every time no literally he he knocked over a vase of flowers oh, no. and, and flowers didn't that I bought clean Tasha. up the water like he just let the water sit on there and there was a huge watermark that sat around for like a week and a half mm. because i'm not the mom i'm not his mom right and i thought sure He'll clean, he'll clean up I'm after redesigning himself. redesigning the studio. Go to the Instagram page and look at the studio. <laughs> anyway, s- side The track, point is that track. Dave doesn't clean up after Two. himself unless I nag him. Every every night, we have what's called pre-bed ritual, PBR pre-bed ritual. <laughs> what is that? And like? what, what we that started like? this because we would get in these stupid fights because I would I would be the one who, would, I could pass out and just like roll into bed. Once I'm passed out, even if I wake up, I'm like done for the night uh-huh. and I could roll into bed and like clean up whatever's left out for tomorrow. And that's like, bah, 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 bah. she's at age of, so we started pre-bed ritual because she would get all stressed out that like I'd be passed out and there'd be like two dishes left on the thing so it but anyway now it's become tasha passes out literally first act of the movie she's done she doesn't even know the there are character developments that are happening she doesn't even know they're in the movie she you passed out before hillary swank even got into the no, movie i saw hillary swank last night we watched that new netflix something mother something it's called i am mother it's a robot movie and anyway, well, everyone, everyone's I, dead or we, sixth ex- sense. Ex- bruce willis hey, shows up spoil but, um, there's i just wrote spoilers that don't exist so left turn but i'm poking at her i'm like trying to wake her up and she's dead as a doornail and then i'm cleaning everything up so the point is, is i'm so agreeable i'll clean up do all these things but god forbid i spill a fucking flower vase <laughs> just clean just, just wipe clean up it. the water that's all it but takes that's my point, is it it's got, just like get rid of the water so stains two, so, it looks gross so two episodes ago we had jess um i don't know if you know jess and um, she had to look at the stained cushion no, and she was the grossed point. The point out. Is, is that Jess, <laughs> we started talking about like, things our stupid boyfriends do and then and then Raquel Pomplin, past guest, our friend Raquel, she's listening to the podcast, sending photos to Tasha about shit her boyfriend. I'm boy- getting so many Instagram DMs of 
people whose boyfriends don't put the cat back on the toothpaste. Apparently, this what is like a cat? common thing yeah, that but- happens. Dave never puts the cat. Okay, never is not a word. I should say. Thirty percent of the time, gentlemen, does not gentlemen put the cat back on the toothpaste. Never put your cat back on the toothpaste. Gentlemen. If you want to drive a woman crazy, what if you want to be alone, why does that for matter? Your whole so, life, but like, because oh. it's disgusting and it's in the bathroom and there's like poop particles flying yeah, in the weird, air. Dude. I'm it's pulling, gross. I'm pulling your hair out of the drain like a rope yeah I'm okay that's that not true because she's i'm not, the only she, person that pulls hair out of the drain they're not actively <laughs> pulling hair out of your head and plopping it in the drain you are actively not putting the tooth cap on that is fucking no i'm weird, act- dude. yeah yeah well, okay well <laughs> but is it because i'm i'm take the tooth i take the toothpaste this out. is some shit you do when you have secret family in russia like, this is <laughs> that's stimulus day this is a guy. stimulus day so i that's put insane. the i put the toothpaste on the thing i got a mechanical toothbrush and uh-huh. then i go take a pee that's right i multitask okay. i do the I same pee. thing it's fine okay yeah. good i pee while i do that but it's like i'm not but you can't put the, wash your hand when you're done you wash your hands and all i'm asking is that you survey the area mm-hmm. that's the thing that really gets me is that he can like walk out of the kitchen and leave kitchen drawers open like he'll leave like a utensil drawer open and it's like when i walk out of a room i survey the area right. I'm getting i check better. my I'm workspace getting, tie up everything. Yeah. yeah i see but if anything's crea- left out that's my creative path is no that's a such a no. cop yeah. out but listen because you're sitting at a table of creatives and none of us are slobs listen right. listen you we'll, we'll end it on this we'll end it on <laughs> we'll end it on mine and then we'll go <laughs> I get the last one. this is what this is what's literally gonna leave me like this is i'm gonna be, be put in an insane asylum for this we have a small place it's a studio right there's not much room i'm gonna turn up i'm gonna just whisper this one i'm gonna make it right see we i'd like to cook i'm a cooker right i go to we have one pot we keep one pot. All right. We don't have room for all these pots. Mm-hmm. We have one pot. Every time I want to boil my fucking eggs for work, the job I don't want to go to, join the patreon.com slash this up. <laughs> Every time I go to boil, what do I find in that pot? What do I find? Do you want me to go look right now? Do you know what's in that pot right Macaroni. now? Yesterday's mac and cheese. Well, Tasha Cordy, everybody. No, I, you deserve to give me some defense here because you passed out. I PBR'd. I came in here, saw that the pot was still on the stove. I was like, I'm not going to put that in the container right now. Because it's why one would in the you? morning. You never do. It's one in the morning. And so I just stuck the container in the fridge. That's what I did. And by, con- I, I, by, con- what I did. by container, you mean pot. pot. I stuck the pot in the what fridge. What if we agree to never let that pot leave the stovetop? What if we agree to that? Right here on this podcast, episode 340. Well, that means during we PBR, you're going to have to put the macaroni in the so container. We have so much Pyrex. You were passed out. You were tucked in bed. And I was doing all the PBR. Uh, could we get the security the cameras? Melinda Gates thing, not to interrupt, but Please. I read this article about how they both like their biggest thing is that they always do the dishes and they like, clean up everything before going to bed. And they're like, we don't go upstairs to that room until everyone in the family has done I like everything. that. Yeah. And, and like, we're yeah. pretty much there. I mean, yeah. I mean, honestly, I... It's true. Once we gave it an acronym, it really like helped us cute. out because yeah. it was like a persistent fight. Yeah. And so... And Tasha, we, Tasha's very ritualistic anyway, so that it was good because I'm not, but I know, like for the podcast, and we'll get out of here, right? But like for the podcast... It would, uh, what what uh, what it requires for me to prime this thing and get it ready to going is like a 10 minute like scramble mm-hmm. for tasha she wants like two days notice she wants to take t- you know she needs a she needs an hour or two like she likes she like I like well just how we were saying like about serving the area like dave dave yeah. doesn't see details and maybe this is a guy thing maybe this is just a dave thing but like <laughs> i want the house to be like very clean and put together and presentable and i pay attention to all the little oh, tuck the in sense. the corners and blah 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 like yeah, yeah. all that and stuff i respect is that i respect me. that i just it just it's like bro i just didn't see that i just i i'm reading braille here i don't see what you see so like i respect that you want that and i'm not trying to make it emotional labor on you i just have to but know if now i have to say it every single like, week well like i had like, my baseball game at, t- at two today and i knew it was i knew we'd get home in like 45 minutes before you know before the podcast started so we had this place like almost airtight ready to go and i I want the place to be clean. I want you to be happy and not stressed out. So like I pick up on you needing that, but did it take 45 episodes of me being like, why the fuck is my chick such a cunt? Yeah. Like it took a while for me to be like, she's a raging asshole to me. She gets so stressed out. And then I go, Oh, okay. Well, we're just different. And my way is not necessarily bad. Like I'm good at doing a million things at once. I can do a million things at once. And Tasha, like she, you can't even talk to her. If she's texting and walking, she's walking at half the speed. She's just like, listen, it's, you're, we, you're, we've said this before and I'll say it again. It's better to do one thing with your full ass than a bunch of things half assed. 
You ever see that street performer who's got the like he's got like the meringue he's got like the guitar and the drum thing and then if, if he like moves his leg the the little like snare a one hits. man band yeah ah, it's me I'm a one man band and I'm doing this I got the live you. stream I'd whole ass one thing not half ass yeah but that's you guys that's that's your style that's your style you know that's and I'm and I'm happy the, for you guys I'm happy better that, style, <laughs> I'm happy that you guys have style. Yeah. but when you need a bunch of shit done half ass you come to Stimulus <laughs> Dave I'll take care of it you how can people find you where do you live give out your social what's, your, what's, um, your, what's your what's your Instagram no, I'm on Instagram at Veronica K all day just the letter K um yeah I all, K all day K all Veronica day. K yeah. all we'll day. take a photo we'll post it Cute. we'll do all that and then um yeah so you'll so you're on the show you're gonna do the june 23rd yes. show yeah, yeah it's yeah. an 11 30 a.m mimosa Wait, stand-up is that a show Sunday? it's a yeah, Sunday you can't do class. it that's it folks we gotta go <laughs> Wait, <laughs> is it how long it's when, literally at 11 30 but is it forever or like when does the class it end? ends um july 21st that's probably like the july show well when so then I when it's over we'll get you August. on what time does your what time's your class at it's 11 30 to 2 30 at the clubhouse that's literally the worst time Fuck, for you i know I, I had to cancel all these weekend plans i had like i don't know I'm i'll tell you what it, i'll but. do your act for you on stage and about <laughs> you dating could, douchebags it's not that original, yeah. <laughs> i'm <laughs> stimulus dave i date douchebags and okay no well, well i'll see you in, uh, in august yeah i really be in the august show and then when football season starts we might have to move to saturday because ain't no one trying to do sunday morning mimosas when football it's just not it's just not trying to fight it no, I'm not. No one's funny enough to compete with Tom Brady. Fucking the Bengals. <laughs> anyway, um, all right. So it's it's Veronica K all day yes. on Instagram, and then any shows to promote, any th- or like what's what's when your does monthly? This, come out? this comes out tonight, baby. Oh, cool. Yeah. So I do a show in Santa Monica called Funny AF. I post about it on my Instagram, but um, yeah, it's in Santa Monica at a dance studio. It's the next one's on Friday the fourteenth, and it's gonna be really fun. We're doing an after party afterwards, so we'll just be drinking until you know five a.m. Oh, Friday um, the f- should we go? Yeah, Is that wait come. June? It'll wait, be really that's fun. That's this Friday. Yeah. Yeah. Fun. Oh, I'm working. I'm actually working till what time's your show at? So it starts at nine and then just kind of I work in Santa Monica till nine. You want to meet Come me? Out, yeah. Tasha's going to agree and then she's going to flake because she's going to be sleeping. We have our thing but, the next day. Oh, uh, we're going to the uh, Boots and Brews. We're going to the country music concert cool. the next day. Either Sorry. way, maybe I'll stop by because I work in Santa Monica. Yeah, anyway, it should be a good show. It's a lot. We always have a lot of fun and it's like kind of an intimate dance space and it's like a BYOB sort of chill. Does it have the bar that you stretch on? What's that? Is that they do have a yeah, bar? Yeah, they have a <laughs> bar. We, well, we cover everything with like a little curtain. Um, How funny is it to stand up places you got to do stand up here? Wait, I did a yeah. show last week at a CrossFit place. Oh, funny. That's How cool. do you do stand up? And they didn't even yeah. like block off the stage. It was just performing in front of like cords and weights <laughs> in front of a bunch of meatheads. <laughs> anyway, um, thanks so much for doing the Thank show and good me, luck yeah. defining their relationship <laughs> and whatever else. Come on next time you have to promote something or with, yeah. when the relationships are defined. Yeah, we want to we want to follow up. Or either be like really happy or like really sad. That's what we like. Yeah. <laughs> really happy or really sad. That's the episode, everybody. Have a good week. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.